This is Faculty Focus from Fairleigh Dickinson University. In this episode, we feature Dr. Nandita Ghosh, Associate Professor in the Department of English. Dr. Ghosh's areas of expertise include imperialism, globalization, and contemporary world literature. There are many effects. I mean, it can be the inheritance of a political system, a judicial system. Uh, it can be the effects of having an, a certain kind of educational system in place, inheriting a language from your colonizer. It can be, um, you know, an ideological infrastructure on various issues. Uh, it can be, um, you know, a newspaper system. It can be the railway system. There are many, many things that you inherit and that has all kinds of effects on various aspects of a culture based on the level or stage of your decolonization. The British had many effects on India. I think one of the things they did very intelligently was their way of increasing the divides. India already was a very divided society. And one of the ways in which the British were able to take over and control the country in a space of 150 years was through the divide and rule policies that they had. They would pit people up against each other. They would pit different groups against each other. And through that kind of div divisive effect, they, would, they were able to have control over specific local areas, specific regions. They were able to wage successful wars where they recruited one group of people against another group of people. That divide and rule culture uh, eventually ended with the division of the subcontinent into what is now India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. That is one, I think, one of the negative effects. I think also the Hindu-Muslim tensions arose considerably with the colonial intervention. Not that those tensions were not there, they were always there. Literature from countries that were formerly colonized by could be Europe, but you can now extend that to include any country colonizing or occupying another country, and then withdrawing from that country, and that country is able to talk back, explaining how the process of being colonized and what happened after independence in their own language or in the language of the colonizers. So they write their own literature, they write their own stories, they write their own narratives, where they place their own experiences at the center, where the narrative voice and the narrative perspective gives them a certain kind of focal um, importance which wasn't there before when they were being talked about by the very people who had colonized them. You can look at the world in complicated ways by looking at literature from various parts of the world that talk about characters, lives, and situations that are very different from your own. But because you're reading, sometimes the act of reading itself makes you get into another person's skin because you're being dragged in through that person's narrative perspective. Not necessarily always. Sometimes na the narrative perspective can be alienating. But either way, whether you're getting sucked in and being invited to imagine conditions that you would never live in, that act of imagination and sympathy with which you stretch yourself out is the first step towards doing global travel.